So now you're taking this yep. action. You say to yourself, you know, I, I, I love XXL. I love the source. But my heart is with, with Vibe Magazine. That's where it's always been. Yep. You go ahead. You start making your yep. call. You get in there. You're working for free for how long? For a year. <laughs> From 96 to 97. I never got, I never got a check for any of the writing that I did there. Um, and when I got in, I was on the digital team. And back in the night, like, you know, 96, the digital team wasn't where you wanted to be. Everybody wanted to be in the print. They wanted their name in print because everybody was grabbing that. The internet was really just starting to break through. And a lot of people didn't have broadband connections. So the sites would be big and a lot of photos and it was just really slow. But if you were able to write a really dope piece, it can get up before the print team could could speak on or have their their stuff come out to the people on the newsstands. So our stories were being referenced by Daily News and all of them because they were on on um, on a daily uh, frequency. So you could write a piece. They see something in vibe about something that's happening in hip hop, and then you might get quoted. And it was like, whoa, that's when a lot of people started seeing like the power of the internet, you know, rather than waiting a full month until like all the stuff would come out for the mags. So I started to see that switch and was like, yeah, that's going to be it. That, this, this whole forum is going to be it. Especially when, um, when the first time I really saw the power of it was when Tupac was killed. And, uh, you know, the unfortunate events made all of us, you know, start typing right away that was on the digital team. And then when you really saw the impact was when Biggie passed and he, when he was killed and we jumped right on, like we went to the, it was on, like it was a Saturday night going into a Sunday morning. We all jumped over to, to the office and we just started working. And I started then saying like, yeah, man, this is going to be, this is going to be the wave right here. This we got to see the future. Yeah, but people didn't want it because the magazines were making so much money. That printed paper, you know, the ads and, and all the events that were connected to it, they were making so much money. It, I would say in the urban space, it kind of delayed a little bit. And then probably like around late 99 going into 2000, you saw the internet, um, the internet rush when everybody made websites. Everybody. It was websites galore, 360 hip hop. Um we had our joint that was connected to Puff called Hook.com. Yeah, I'm going to get um, into all of that because it's... it's yeah, it was crazy. It's yeah, man. It's for your story. Can, 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 can I go and... I want to pull one thing yeah. of, of, of what you just said. You were willing to work for free, number one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But so many people, they overvalue themselves. And right. They swear to death that they want to get into a certain industry, but right. they're either too cool or too valuable to give their time <laughs> for free. So that's number, number or, 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 or too entitled. Or too entitled. One hundred percent. Too entitled, too you know entitled I mean? to give their time for free to a yep. so-called career that 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 you want to be in. Right. But another thing that I love that you said is that you got in on the digital side. People. Mm -hmm. Take yourself back to 96. The digital side was not what it is today. So uh, it was just about getting in where you fit in. You took yes. whatever was available to you. And that's another yep. lesson that I think people need to understand. And especially when they hear the rest of your story and the heights that you've risen to, mm -hmm. you, were just, you just needed to get in. I don't care how I get in. I don't care if I'm sweeping the floors. If I'm Exactly. I need to get in that Exactly. Building. I just need to be in. And there was one time, I, like in that whole year, I went from being an intern to starting to kind of like freelance for them, but without pay. So there was one part when the initial intern group all came in, we all came in like around May of 96. And I guess like everybody was gonna start going back to school in September of, of 96. And that's when everything is happening. You got the pot stuff. It's, 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 getting, it's getting lit. And everybody's going back to school. My man is about to transition out the job. 
and I'm just there because I got it on my own. I didn't have the deadline. Now, when everybody was leaving, I could have just left and not go back. But I just acted like ain't nothing happened. So I just I just started showing up. <laughs> and with my book bag, everything out after school, I just started showing up still. And they was like, oh, yo, they here, yo, they do that story. I was like, yep, I got it. Don't worry about it, I got it. And just planted myself there to the point where it was just like, well, I guess he's still going. Because yeah. nobody, no, I, I was like, you're going to have to tell me that I can't come back here anymore. You're going to have to tell me, like, like somebody that's stolen, like, the store, you see the picture, don't let him in. <laughs> <laughs> you was going to have to do that because I was going to keep coming back. And what I did was I endeared myself and my services to everybody in there. So once I got in, I would go by everybody and, and introduce myself and let them know, like, hey, have you heard the new joint from the Bush Babies? I knew they wouldn't hear certain artists they weren't in tune with because I was a backpack kid. I used to run with the executioners, the DJ crew. So I would hear all this, all this different music, you know, early from the record pools and all that. So I would take that knowledge and go back into the office and talk to certain editors like, yo, you don't know about them? Man, I thought you was on it, man. I thought you was on it. I'll put the pressure on them. So then when it was time for them to know about certain things within that underground realm, they would have to come see me. They would talk to me at least. Yo, Day, did you hear? Next thing you know, they're coming to me asking me if I heard such and such. I so love it was where you're going. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, man. That's that's how a lot of my relationships started with a lot of the editors up there. Kick, 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 and I, I wanted to move this interview forward, but I got because you're just <laughs> so many. Gems. I'm with it. I'm with People it. People don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. Granted, you were at the bottom. Of the totem pole. All the way. We You're were bottom. You're not even bottom, bottom. Heck yeah. <laughs> but nope. where you found you could bring value to the company was number yeah. one, I'm going to always be here. When y'all yeah. look up, I'm going to be here. If yeah, you need to do anything, I don't care if you have an assistant already, look up, say day one, I'm right here. You're going to have to get me out this building. But yep. more important, you bought a value that I'm not even sure, well maybe, yes, it, maybe it was conscious on your end. Although you were not writing at that time and you were not intricate into this system yet, you had your ear to the ground. Yes, indeed. With everything that this magazine represented. Yep. So the fact that you could tell them what groups were next, who was hot and they should keep their eye out for, that mm -hmm. is invaluable to somebody who's now a VP, who's editor-in-chief, somebody who's too busy to, yes. to really sit and listen and be part of the day-to-day -day of what's going on in the streets, in the barbershops, in the hoods. You exactly. agree. That is That's so exactly. an important piece that you just mentioned. Yep, that was, that was my role. And I was in the barbershops all the time back then, just making sure like I'm hearing new stuff. Or I'm at, I'm at the events early while everybody's doing sound checks and stuff like that. I would just find ways to be um, just a cultural, like you said, a, a, a cultural curator. But at the time, I just wanted to absorb all of that. I wanted to absorb it and then bring it back, back out to the people. And even though I didn't have a big writing position, I gave that information to the people that did. And it's like, yo, Here's the information. Do what you will with it. I'm just letting you know I'm a resource for you. If you see me around here, I got you. If I know about it, I'm going to let you know. You know, and, and that's how you become valuable it. to people. Yep. I love it because, you know, there's somebody right now who is sitting and they're keeping their mouth shut and they're just looking at like, you know, I, I, I come into work, but I'm just an assistant. I'm just a coordinator. And in your head, you're putting yourself in a box and you don't yep. realize you probably possess skills or you have some mm -hmm. information or you could bring value to that company that would have the, the upper echelon of the company take notice, know your name and, and start to say, we need him or we need her in these. Automatic. That, that's Automatic. an important um, piece that you just dropped. Yeah, Sean. And, and, and when I think about now, after having my career and getting all these like, big titles and stuff like that 
when I think about the people on my staff that have helped me, yes, I pay them to help me. Like we, we, you. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.